So I'm sitting there, it's my turn, and I've got a police scanner right on the edge of my desk and it's crackling with these codes. After you sit and listen to the scanner for a while, you get to know all the codes. I've got a list that I look up sometimes, but I pretty much hear the same ones all the time. You hear, there's code nine in the residence, that means somebody in the house has a gun. Or if you hear that the subject is possibly 10 to 2, it means that they think somebody's a little nuts. Or if they say, I'm 10 for 1, that means somebody's made an arrest. <clears throat> so I'm sitting there listening to the same old, same old, and I'm fantasizing about what, what it must be like to work someplace where superheroes, you know? I mean, it's really exciting, like New York City, where they got Spider-Man, Superman, and the Bat Signal, and all this stuff going on. And, wouldn't that be great to work the superhero beat? When suddenly, on the scanner, I hear a code that I have never heard before. We've got 10-1-9-4-O-B-B. And then I hear the voice of a cop going, what? I, I, did I hear what you said? Yeah, I got a 10-1-9-4-O-B-B on the Stratford. And I, I'm thinking, I know where the Stratford is. It's, I used to live right next door, so I run. So drive my car over there really fast to try to get there before the police set up containment. And I had kept my key to my old apartment building. And I unlocked the back door and I run up the stairs and I bang on the door of an apartment. And this guy opens it and said, what, who are you? And I said, can I use your bathroom? And he goes, what? And I rush into this guy's bathroom because I knew that right in the ceiling there was a removable tile that let me have access to the roof. So I crawl through and I get on the roof and there's just a little ladder, I mean, from there up to the Stratford. And I'm climbing up this ladder and I'm thinking what Lois Lane said in Superman 1, Pulitzer Prize, Pulitzer Prize, Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to the top, and there is a guy standing on the edge of the roof wearing silver tights and a cape. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got a superhero. And I get out my notebook and I walk over there, excuse me, sir, daily news. And he scared him to death. He did not know I'd be up there. He said, who are you? And I said, <clears throat> Leslie Slate, Daily News. Um, I'd like to interview you. Would you mind letting me know why you're up here? <clears throat> and, and, and what's your name? And he said, Zorg. And I said, Z-O-R-G? Yes. And I said, what's your uh, uh, last name? And he said, this is my only name. <laughs> OK, I said, and you're from where? Longview, Kelso? And he said, I am from a flat beyond your kid. I said, okay. And then suddenly, sirens start drowning out everything. The cops have arrived. And he grabs me and flies me through the air. Before I could catch my breath, we were on the top of the furnace at Fiverr, the tallest place in the entire area. And he says, you will be left alone here. And he gives me a great interview. So I'm getting it all down. And I'm just about to wrap it up when suddenly out of nowhere we are interrupted by somebody wearing red tights and a yellow cape and he knocks Zord off the top of the furnace and they're flying at each other and punching each other and I think, oh God, I get this on, I have a camera to see. I gotta get pictures. And I press the battery of my camera. The darn, it's dead, it's dead. It always happens, I swear. So I've got little pictures and I'm thinking, well, what am I gonna do on my, Am I going to get that? Are you able to get down from here? Because it looks like this guy in the red tights is beating up my ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's over very quickly. Zorg is defeated by the guy in red. And then the guy in red picks me up and pushed me off right after <clears throat> the Daily News before I had a chance to say, excuse me, and your name is? And he's gone. So I go in the building. And there, I there's the coffee desk, and I'm telling them all about this great experience I just had. And I, they're looking at me like, you're crazy. You're 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> and the coffee editor says, OK, you, got, you talked to a guy who gave you a fake name and a <clears> fake <throat> address. And then the second guy, didn't, you didn't even get his name, and you didn't have any pictures. You got no story. And I'm thinking, how did Lois Lane handle it? Well, I'm, I'm about to leave to go home, and I realize my car is back at the Stratford. But it's not. It's there in the parking lot. And there, underneath the, the windshield wiper, is a note that says, Shazam.